What is it really like? The first step into a prison cell block. What are you really likely going to experience? What kind of things are going to come your way in the first five or so minutes? And what are the actual thoughts that are going through your head as you're entering this cell block? Uh, that's what we're going to talk about here today. So the first thing um, I imagine probably comes to mind in, in a lot of people's uh, thoughts of first entering a, a cell block is going to come from the movies, you know, all the movies and TV shows and those scenes you see where the guy is entering a jail or a prison and he's kind of got his stuff and he's walking down this row of just the old classic jail bars and there's all these guys just uh, just reaching out trying to grab him and uh, shaking the cage and I'm like you're dead meat fresh meat you're mine buddy you're mine I don't even know you I've never met you before but boy I just I don't know for some reason I really just want to rip you apart that doesn't happen that <laughs> I don't think I've ever walked into a cell block and that's happened. It just came to mind where the, the most common place I see clips like that, which is scared straight or beyond scared straight. Um, you know, you always see the guys, whoa, that's fake. You know, I, I would assume a lot of people know that when watching that show, but I can tell you from experience, I remember being in there and we were at a certain yard and... Uh, the warden came around and told us that they were bringing some juveniles through who were part of a scared straight program. It wasn't as thorough as like, you know, or maybe we just weren't the guys who were the actual ones talking to them and having those one-on-ones with them, but they were going to be led through the prison. And so they just kind of came by and was like, hey, we're going to, hey, we'll give you guys a, a honey bun or extra honey bun. You know, they kind of pass it out, call it a three-way, a honey bun, a nutty bar, and a in a ramen noodle soup. It was like, we'll give you guys three ways. Um, if when these kids come by, man, just scare them, you know, don't touch them. Don't put your hands on them, but just like shout at them and you get real aggressive with them and just try to scare them. You know, if you guys help us out and do that, we'll pass out some three ways later after, after the, you know, uh, dinner. And so all that, you know, it's fake. It's just to scare the kids in reality. When you're an actual prisoner there, you know, they don't do that. It's actually the opposite. Um, which is, in a way, it's a little worse. It's a little creepier. Um, because the other way, I mean, at least you know what's coming. And just brace yourself, man. You know, it's prison. Brace yourself. You know, the other way, uh, the actual way, um, it's really quiet. There's not a lot of noises in there. Everyone's behind the cell. Usually the time of day that you're being brought in um, to your new cell block. Uh, it's going to be in the afternoon once all the prisoners have been locked back into their cell for the day. Um, and you're going to be put in your cell. So uh, everyone's just back there kind of quiet, man. And, and it's kind of that uncertainty. You know, you don't know what's coming your way. Um, which, you know, again, personally, that's a little worse for me because I just like to know. Um, and I'm going to have to wonder all night what's coming my way tomorrow. Um, so when you first walk in, uh, that's a common myth or cliche, whatever. Um, that a lot of people probably think all these people are screaming at you, ready to rip your throat out. If somebody does want to get you, they're, they're not going to let you know while they're locked behind the cell door. Uh, you, you won't know until they're able to do it to you. But most times, I don't think anyone of the first sight upon seeing you is going to want to do anything to you. They don't have a reason. Um, people aren't just going to attack you for no reason. First of all, I'll tell you what's really going on um, with all that quiet and, and all that lack of talking. Uh, it's because there's a lot of watching going on. These inmates are at their doors. Um, they probably heard the, the dorm, uh, the prison dorm door open. Um, they can hear those keys. These guys are like, you know, you're like a dog in there. You know, you know every sound and what every sound means. And when those keys jingle, somebody's coming in. They're going to check and see who that is. So, I mean, there's probably 200 cells or 100 cells, 200 guys uh, in this dorm, and they are all going to be on that window when they hear that sound of someone coming in, and they're going to check out who is coming in because, first of all, they know the time of day that inmates get brought in. They know the certain days for that yard that inmates get brought in. Um, so they're going to check, and um, they want to know, is this someone I have problems with? I've been in a, a, a knife fight with this guy, or we have beef or, or something from a past prison yard, you know, years ago. Um 
And now I need to be aware that this guy is now in here with me, or is this one of my buddies and I'm glad to see him, or is it just a new guy? Is it a guy who looks like he's got a lot of money? Is he coming in with a lot of food? Maybe I want to, you know, anything. So right away, everyone's watching you. They're watching your every move. And, and if you're like me and you got a little anxiety, I'm sure everybody has a little bit. But man, that is a <laughs> it's such an uncomfortable feeling because you can just feel you don't really just want to start staring at people in their in their you know cell windows on the door but you can just tell man you can feel all these eyes on you and everything you do you don't even know where your cell's at you've just been given a piece of paper it says like cell 208 and you don't know and you just you know you you look so out of place so uh, you're just kind of looking around with your little bag of stuff and you know you feel all these eyes on you and what they're doing is they're observing they're watching you they're sizing you up um Really, just at that at, during those first moments, already just that quick, you in each person's mind, you are being placed where they think you appropriately fit in that cell block's hierarchy of inmates, um, and they're watching everything you do, and it's just helping them analyze and decide what kind of guy you are, who you are, are you important, are you not important, are you more likely, you know, somebody I'm gonna try to like. Um, scam or, or benefit off of or extort or are you a guy who looks like he's pretty confident he's pretty assertive aggressive he's clearly uh, maybe you're in a gang um, they're going to be looking at your tattoos they're looking at your neck they're looking at your face they're looking at your hands what does this guy have tattooed on him if anything are they gang tattoos and this is you know uh, one big thing and I'm not saying this is the only and exact reason why every single person who gets a big gang tattoo in a very, very visible place on them, um, you know, it's not why they do it, but a lot of people, well, you know, once they get to prison and they join a gang for moments exactly like this and some other moments, um, you know, they want it to be known off top. Um, I'm in a gang. I'm, I'm with somebody in here because immediately they're you know when they look at you and if you have this humongous six point star on your neck well clearly this guy's in a gang i guess he's off limits you know i can't i mean if he's coming in with a big bag of canteen and oh he's got a he's got a tv and he's got those nice expensive you know he doesn't have the little 16 dollar headphones he's got those expensive hundred dollar headphones you can order you know i really want those you know immediately he's probably going to be off limits because you can't just and that's another reason why no one is going to just immediately attack you they don't know who you are yet. You know, you could be a very important or even an unimportant gang member, but if they just go and attack you, well, then for no good reason, you've just you've just made crossed a huge line. I mean, you just physically attacked a gang member, and now, even if you're in a gang, now your gang is possibly going to be in a big issue um, with this other gang, and probably what's going to happen is um, your own gang is going to discipline you physically for what you did. So that's another reason, you know, they're not just going to jump on you right away. They definitely are going to figure out who you are. Um, and so in those first few seconds before people can actually go physically talk to you, they will be sizing you up, looking for tattoos, looking for any signs and indications of who you are or what kind of guy you might be. So that's what they're doing um, when you're first entering the cell block. Uh, as for what you are probably actually doing as they're doing their analysis, you're probably just trying to hide how... Uh, uncomfortable you're feeling and uh, how anxious you're feeling I know me I mean you know I felt a little fear I think it's normal to feel a little fear I think anyone who says that they walk into a brand new cell block you can't even see who else is in there yet and for you to say even if you'll fight you'll stand up for yourself you're a big tough guy cool anyone who says that they don't feel at least a little bit of fear is full of crap so I definitely did. Um, I'm in thing to happen. Um, even while they're locked behind the doors, you may have one, two, maybe three inmates kind of speak up and first approach you with these uh, kind of run of the mill tests um, to kind of further figure out what can I get away with with doing to this guy or what can I not get away with? Um, how far can I take things in this way or that way? Um, you know, just who is this guy? And, and instead of just watching and looking and trying to figure that out, they may, they may try a little test on you in some way. And you might even get a guy, um, 
who calls you to the door because, see, they've been locked down and you're out of your cell for the moment. And they'll be like, hey, man, come here, come here. Hey, 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 yo, come here real quick, man. Come to my door, cell 23. So you run over there or you don't run. See, this is where it all begins. It's like, what are you going to do and what are you not going to do? And what are the ben- what are the consequences or um, the advantages of each decision with this? For instance, it could, let's just say it was a completely harmless guy who truly just needed to pass a very important note. It needed to be delivered right then um, to this cell on the bottom floor, and you are the only guy out of your cell right now, and it needs to get to him right now. It's very important for whatever reason, and he just genuinely needs your help. Hey, man, don't be a jerk. <laughs> here's this note. Come on, man. Just bring that down there for me real quick. You know, I would do the same for you if, if the roles were reversed and you know, and you do that and it's fine or you don't do that. And now you've just, you're clearly going to be uh, rubbing this guy who didn't mean any harm uh, the wrong way. And you know, sometimes you don't know if he means any harm or not. You don't know. I mean, that's the whole mind puzzle of this prison stuff. Literally within the first five minutes of getting there, it's like an overthinker's worst nightmare, you know, um, and then, you know, that could be the case. And then you could have a guy who's, you know, he's got to come ask you to do something that uh, he knows that most inmates probably wouldn't do. Or, or maybe he's, you know, if he's a guy, let's say he's a guy selling wine and he has wine and um, he just got some money sent to him on Cash App on his contraband cell phone from a guy who's downstairs or many cells down and he's got this gallon of wine in a trash bag Um, and he's like hey man I'm gonna slide this be careful I'm gonna slide this under the door man you just ease it on out from under this door and go bring it down there to sell 17 for me okay and you know are you gonna do that or are you not gonna do that and let's say you do it and you're probably thinking wait a minute jumpsuit pause right there how do you get a trash bag full of wine under those tiny cracks uh, of the door between the door and the floor Well, I'll tell you how very carefully, that's how. And so, you know, if there's even like a grain of sand sized chip of concrete on the floor and you move that thing too fast or the wrong way, it's going to pop a little hole in the bag. And now your wine's leak, it got this little leak. And so now you're standing there, you got the wine, you're trying to hold this, you know, catch this wine. Now you're soaked in contraband wine when the officer comes around to like lock your cell. And, you know, and then now this guy might, hey, man, I told you to be careful. Now you now you wasted all that wine. Now you owe me. Now you got to pay for it. Like, what are you going to do? You know, are you going to let him do you like that? Were you in the wrong? Were you not in the wrong? Is this guy full of crap? Are you going to let him get away with it? What kind of problems is it going to bring if you refuse to do it? Are you ready for those problems? Maybe you are. Cool. It's just, you know, it, it, it all comes down to... What kind of guy are you? What kind of personality do you have? What you know? How are you going to do your time? You know, what are you prepared to do and not do? And and you know, it, it, many personal preferences here is is what it comes down to. The point I'm trying to make here is that that quick, just in five minutes, you could you know literally be faced with several tests and challenges of of these forks in the road that are going to determine how people treat you and you know if if i tell you you owe me money for that and you know deep down that i shouldn't be having to pay for that but i'm going to do it anyway because hey it's my first day i don't want any problems well you can bet that other people are watching that and even this guy who just did it to you is now aware of that and they're gonna be like well i guess i can do stuff like that too and all you're gonna do is invite your more problems your way so um, that's just kind of, you know, a lot of that stuff is going to happen, even if it's not right there in the first five minutes. If you get put in your cell and you, then when you're let out in the morning and everyone comes out, well, hey, it's it's game time, baby. They're going to approach you. They're going to be asking you questions. Who are you? Where'd you come from? What's up with you? Do you bang? Are you in a gang? You know, or and then even run these tests on you. So, um, I mean, in a nutshell, that's what you're going to be faced with. Is it a bunch of yelling and screaming and death threats and all this, you know, craziness? And then just, you know, this old myth, as soon as you get there, punch the biggest person, let them know you mean business. No, that's all a bunch of crap. Um, what you can't expect is a much more subtle, thought out, um, pre-planned approach, strategic approach by these inmates to really just figure out, is this guy above me or below me or right here with me? in this prison cell block's 
hierarchy of inmates and anything below I'm probably going to be able to do some some kind of messed up stuff to probably you know figure a way to cheat them to scam them to you know bully them extort them steal from them whatever you know who knows what he wants to do if he's right here even with me who knows maybe we're friends if you're right here above me well I know I shouldn't even try anything funny with you um and I should probably see if maybe I could find a way to help you out you know, because the chances are I'd like to uh, get helped out by you someday. So with all that being said, I imagine you might be thinking, man, jumpsuit, it sounds like, you know, especially with the, some of these tests and considering the fact that if you, you're you brand new there, you don't really know any of these guys, um, you don't really know who means harm and who doesn't, who's okay to kind of follow through on some of these things with and, and who I should just, no matter what, avoid them and say no man it sounds like you're you're damned if you do you're damned if you don't with some of these tests what do you even do well uh it's funny you say that because i do have a video i posted uh, about two days ago uh, i'll put a link right here to it at the end of this video it's called essentially how to go from fresh meat to somewhat of a, a convict an experienced convict with a lot of knowledge um, on your first day with just one action just one action. And no, it's not knock the biggest guy out you see, okay? Um, it's a lot more sensible and realistic. So check that video out if that's something that interests you. But aside from that, that's pretty much what you're going to be able to expect when you first step foot into a prison cell block. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you'd like me to keep going with this, your first day, your first week, your first month in there, um, other things like that kind of related to this video's subject, let me know in the comments and I will do my best. Thanks for watching. See you later.